Hey everybody, welcome to the Deep Dive Show. My name is Mpomo Tauru. Our goal with the show is to bring you and I in proximity to the people and ideas that will show us that it is possible and it can be done and eventually help us achieve on our dreams and goals. Today we have a brave, young and exciting entrepreneur. She graduated from the University of Botswana as an economist and dove straight into the entrepreneurial world by creating amazing donuts, in her words, pieces of edible art that have flooded the market. She's also a food blogger and an aspiring serial entrepreneur. So ladies and gentlemen, help me in welcoming Wanata Mokwati. Welcome to the show, Wanata. Thank you, Mpoha. Um, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Beautiful. Um, yes, I've always wanted to have a conversation with you, as you know. Um, so walk us through, you are the founder of W. Donuts. Um, talk to us about that business. Where did it start for you and why? Um, I like to say I started my business by mistake, really. Um, <laughs> fate, I guess. What um, led that mistake happen? Pardon? What led that mistake happen? Yes, yeah. Um, so what happened was initially, I still do. Um, I have a food blog. So my business um, started from my food blog. So during the first lockdown, um, I couldn't go out to restaurants. So I decided... For the rest of, for the entire lockdown, I bought a 12 kg of flour, 12.5. And yes. I was like, this entire lockdown, I'm going to make different types of breads. That's all I'm doing. And I'm going to be posting, sharing the recipes on my food blog mm. in order to keep my interaction um, and my audience engaged throughout the lockdown. Mm. So one day I made donuts. I came across a donut recipe. I made donuts. I tweaked it a bit and... My family thought it was amazing. My family thinks everything I make is amazing. So I was like, ah, man. So um, post lockdown, um, I went back to school and the idea kept kept coming back to me. Mm -hmm. um, what if I sell these donuts? What if they really were amazing? So um, I made them for my cousin and she, my cousin and my aunt. I was back in Gabs now. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I was making them for my parents and my siblings. So now I was back in Gabs, I was making them for my aunt and my cousin. They agreed that they were amazing. So um, a few weeks after that, I decided to take them to school um, and have my first market test. So I got to school and I think we sold... This is in UB, um, I guess. Yeah, in UB. Mm. I was doing my final year. Um, I sold them in less than an hour. I sold, I think we made 40 donuts. We sold them in less than an hour. And I thought, okay, this could work. This is a thing. This is a thing. This yeah. could work. But because I was still in school, I was struggling with the times uh, because I I had orders. Could I could have orders in the morning, but still have school, have exams because I was in my final year. Mm. So it was a bit, it was a bit hectic. Um, but yeah, man, I endured and here I am. Now it's a full-fledged business that I am fully dependent on now. Mm. Yeah. The money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So talk to me about um, the, the love for, you know, confectionery. Mm -hmm. hey, where did it start? And, and, you know, where did it start? Were you somebody that grew up cooking, you know, Mantrani coming up and... So what did this start for you? I don't, I wouldn't say I necessarily was into confectionery. I was just into food as a whole. I liked cooking. I still do. Um, I think my family knows me for cooking, basically. I, I just enjoy it. I love it. So that's why I even had a food blog initially. Mm -hmm. um, food just interests me. I love experiencing food, not eating it. I love experiencing food. Hmm. So, um, wait, 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 what does that mean though? Like, you just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, you just <laughs> chew on food. <laughs> so, I, I like, man, you like interacting. I, like no, this. no, no, no. I like, um, the way it entices different feelings in me. Mm -hmm. Like, food can 
make you happy. Food can heal you. Food can do like you can feel, you know, when you drink coffee, I drink coffee in a different way. I experience the coffee. I can feel the coffee run down my throat, warm up my body. Yeah. You just drink coffee and you're like, yeah, I'm warm. I felt it warm. I don't know, dude. It's an experience. Right. I think maybe right. one day you'll experience it. I don't okay. know. Okay. But it's, it's intentional. You have to be intentional about it. So I just love experiencing food. And I decided to write about it. Mm. And that gave birth to my business. Mm. Yeah. So that idea of you having the 12.5, it was just your thing. You, yeah. You just like, it was you just know, my I'm thing. home. So let me just do this. Yeah. All right. Talk to me about how you got, you know, your equipment. I think that's a powerful story. Um. So, yeah, the story, <laughs> you know, my business is just, <laughs> it's just a whole lot of mistakes that uh, really turned out so well. So one day I was just on Twitter and I was like, man, I want to expand my business, but I need um, a stove. So at that time, my business was still new. Um, I, I, I was still in school at that time. So um, I wasn't able to raise enough revenue because I, I wasn't fully focused on the business. Yes. So I posted one day. I'm like, um, hi, BW Twitter. This is exactly, this is somewhat what my tweet said. I was just like, hi, BW Twitter. Um, Please help me raise money for a stove that I need for my business. Um, And I explained that I needed, um, at the time I had 1.5 and the stove that I wanted was Mm 5.5. So I explained to them that I had... um, you needed 4K. I needed 4K, basically. Mm. And I tweeted, and then I went I, I went on with my evening. Like, I had, like, 300 followers, so I was like, ah, I'm just posting. Mm. Nobody's going to see it. Then um, I just heard my phone, like, uh, there were a lot of alerts on my phone. So I was like, okay. I had even forgotten I posted. So I yeah. go back to my phone. I'm getting retweets. I'm getting comments. I'm getting inboxes. People are like, how much do you need? Um, please hey. um, share your number. Would like to help you, assist you with your business. Share your number. How can we pay to sell orange money? All those different Batuana. Um, Batuana. All those <laughs> different, even Batuana in, <laughs> Batuana in Botswana and Batuana overseas. So mm. I got PayPal's. I got... Yo transfers, wires, dog. I got a whole lot of things. And um, that day was just amazing for me. It was so emotional because I didn't expect, you know, when you just post, Mm. when no one knows you, you just post. So on Twitter, they're like real tweets, like tweets, tweets, like Mm. people who are famous on Twitter. So Mm. I was just a person with 300 followers, Usually when I tweeted, I was just talking to myself. But that day, it blew up. <laughs> hmm. It blew up and... But where did you get the idea from, from, though? Like, you just it just came to you and you just posted. Yeah, dog. I was just like, dude, I need money. Like, what can I do? And I was just like... Ah. You know when you share your thoughts. So Twitter, Twitter isn't like um, other social media. If if you are a small account on Twitter, you'd understand that Twitter, you use Twitter as like a diary. You could mm. you could just post Ori, yo, I'm so famished, or just things that yeah. you wouldn't normally share on other social media platforms. So I was just sharing my what was on my mind at the time. And it was happened. my day. So how much did they raise? They raised like I think it was just over five thousand Ula <laughs> in, in, in less in, than in, 24 in, hours. Sure. Yeah. I think I posted my at around five and I had the money by before midnight. So um wow. even when I once I reached the money, I I I, I posted a tweet, keep no, it's fine. Um I've reached the, um, amount. the amount. People are just like, dude, no, 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 no. You what said else? you want money. <laughs> We're going did, to give you <laughs> <laughs> you said you want money. You can't say no to our money. Like, hey. there was literally a woman who was like, no, dog. You said you want money. Take my money. Hey. You can buy other things with it. Your business doesn't just only need a stove. 
need a stove. It needs other stuff. So you can buy those other stuff with the um, surplus. The story blows me away every time. Yeah, like, I think everyone every was every quite blown time. away because it, I even shared it with my mom, my dad, my aunt. Everyone was just like, are you serious? And I'm like, guys, even I can't believe it. Yeah, no, I have to talk to Chid. <laughs> We're going to pause here for a break and we'll be back with Wanata. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing there's some amount of value that you're getting from this video. I'm here to tell you that we have more. We've created a Patreon account. This is a monthly subscription-based model where you'll be investing as little as $5 a month to be able to support our work. And in turn, you will have access to behind the scenes, exclusive content, live shows, and even information on future events. Your investment into us allows us to be able to create more and better content, to be able to push these stories off. It is possible and it can be done. So if that sounds interesting to you, head over to patreon.com forward slash deep dev sessions and become a patron. See you on the inside. Welcome back everybody. We're here with Wanata Mokwati. So Wanata, you actually have, you have a degree, you know, you're an economist, um, but you dove right into entrepreneurship after varsity. So what is entrepreneurship to you? Like this is not, you have a degree, so you actually have something that you could be doing, but you chose this path. Um, I think for me, I was exposed to entrepreneurship from a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents worked, both my parents worked, but they still both ran um, businesses on the side. Mm -hmm. So I think that opened me up to what, the possibilities of me starting my own thing and actually being successful with it. Um, so I don't know, man. I think it brought up a love for entrepreneurship in me because I think I've been practicing it for a very long time. Mm. I think I think if you were to ask my family what they know me for, they'd say mm. food, mm. cooking, and business. Mm. So That's those heavy. are my two loves of my life. What was your first business? My first business was, <laughs> my first business, I started my first business um, when I was in, I think I was in primary school. It wasn't really a business, but my first um, transaction with money, trading, mm. was um, we went to my grandma's house. You know, when you go to your grandma's house, your parents will give you five pula before they leave. Mm. So my parents gave me cash and I went to buy um, those biscuits. Need to be doing good. My quality. Hey, I went to buy my quality. Yeah, the round hey. ones. I went to buy my quality and I came back and I sold them to my cousins. Um, it was a hol it was the holidays, so everyone was home. Um, I attempted mm. to I, let me say attempted to sell them to my cousins because by labor color that did they ever pay me? No. <sighs> so that was actually my that was my first that's my first mm. memory of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then my first real 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 business was in high school. Mm. So in high school, uh, my friend and I, my friend, mm. uh, my friend and I started a business. We started it with, it, it just came, it, it, <sighs> I'm about to say this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a mistake. Um, it wasn't a mistake, but it just happened. So after school, we decided to buy sweets. We liked munching on sweets in class. And we didn't like the fact that we're always spending a lot of money on sweets, besides the fact that we knew a packet of sweets costed less than what we spend in a day. For sure. So after school, we were working home and we decided to pass by a local general dealer. Um, and we bought a packet of sweets. We, we split it. It was six pula. It was smoothies. Smoothies. We bought it for six pula. Three, bucks three, bucks, three bucks, three bucks. The, 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 the plan was to share it equally. So the next morning we get to school, ah, we have sweets. So I'm like, oh, pass me, pass me some sweets there. And somebody's like, are you guys selling sweets? We looked at each other and we're like, 
actually, yes, we are. Yeah. And that is how our first successful man, that business was so successful. That was that was my first successful mm. business that made profit and actually employed people. How did it so, go? How did it go? We wanna know that. We wanna okay, know. That. Um so the first few weeks of our business, so the first day we sold that packet of sweets. And then after school, we decided to get another packet of sweets. We bought another packet of sweets um, and it continued on for like a month. Everything was going well. The books are going well. We're making profit, you know. And um, I think after a month, we decided to, we came up with this thing where we said we're selling shares. I don't know what we thought shares were. But we just told our class, hi guys, we're selling shares into mm. our business. Um, who'd like to buy shares? Um, the first time we, we we announced that only one person bought. So we were selling them for 30 bucks. And that 30 bucks was to be shared between Rita and I. Mm. We ate it, we chowed it, man. <laughs> we, are, we are thanking ourselves for the hard work. Yeah. So we one person bought and then... Um, we gave some of it to the business so that we could buy stock and then we ate, we charged some of it, mm. you know? And then after... That's wise though. Yeah. I mean, at a young age. Yeah. Yeah. I think when, now when we think about it, we're like, wow, that's a genius. <laughs> yeah. So, um, after another, after a few weeks, I think it was a few days, a few weeks, I don't know. It wasn't from five a long time ago. So we, we came back to the class again and we're like, guys, we're back again. We're selling shares. We needed to inject capital into our business because we're trying to um, diversify our products. So we're trying to sell um, chocolates now. We're trying to sell chocolates, champions, mm. smarties. We're just trying to get a lot of products into our business. So we needed money in order to, for us to buy those things. So we mm. decided to make people pay That's to deep, enter our business, right? So we, we came back. Now we raised the money a bit. We're like, guys... Um, we have two spaces. We're selling um, shares, 50 bucks for you to get in. And this time people saw the growth in our business. Everyone was quite keen. So you we got two price. people. Pardon? You yeah, raised we the raised price. the price. We yeah. raised the price by 20 bucks. And p- two people um, bought the shares. And we that is when we started selling biscuits, chips. Man, we almost had an, t- an entire tuck shop. Mm. So our business ran, we, we got people to sell even when we were not there. We, mm. Our high school had um, boarders, um, people who lived on camp. So mm. um, we made sure that during the weekend when the tuck, school tuck shop was closed, our business was running to um, um, service these people with what they wanted. We also um, expanded our business and we started loaning out money to the boarding students. Mm. You know, sometimes you'd be waiting for your mom to come um, send you some pocket money. So while you're still waiting and you needed to get a few things, we were there to help you. We'd give mm. you um, a certain amount of money um, and then you'd bring it back with a certain interest. At the end of our... Um, what was it called? I won't say semester term mm. in high school it was term, right? Yeah. So at the end of the term, mm. we just we you're just flying high now. <laughs> <laughs> you're flying high now. Yeah. So that was my first. That mm. was my first successful business, and that I think that is one of the man. I think that is one of the stories I'll never stop telling because. When I think about it now, I'm like, where did we even think about doing all those things of selling shares? Because it actually makes sense now when we think about it as adults. But at that time, we didn't know that it was actually something that happens mm. for you to um, get investors to print, um, put in money into your business for you to expand it. Mm. So, yeah. So, oh, last question, though, on to this. How were you able to reward them? Oh, um, they became um, partners. Mm-hmm. So we... we, we, we gave we, them some profits or some... We shared it equally, actually. Oh. So, no, no, no. But not equ- equally from your... Um, Investment. The, the date that you entered the business. Okay. So the money that we made before, you were not... Um, 
Yeah. You didn't have a share. The people who joined, Kuru, you had a share in the money that we made from the date you, you mm-hmm. joined our business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we shared it equally from then on mm. for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy business lessons in that story. Like, I can pick out at least four in that story. <laughs> We're going to pause here for a break and we'll be back with Wanata. Welcome back, everybody. You are here with Wanata. So, Wanata, you're also a food blogger, right? And I know that... Um, we, let, let's just talk about food blogging in, in, its, in, in and of itself. Walk us through what you do and also how this is um, a revenue stream for you. Um, so, with food blogging, what I do is I, I just randomly choose a place to go to. Um, for whatever reason at that time, mm. I just choose a place. And then um, I what I do is I take pictures of my food before I eat it. I take pictures or during, basically, I just create content on the plate that I have that day. Mm. Then what I do is I'm going to, I write um, my experiences. So I'm going to talk about. Can you experience food? Yes, yeah, I live I live. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So I talk about my experience, um, my experience when it comes to food, mm. the customer service, and just the overall um, um, reception at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. So I'll just give a synopsis of what the food tasted like. Did I like it? Um, I try as much as possible not to be biased. And I make sure that when I do talk about food, I talk about the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. There'll never be a time where something is just horrible. Okay. There has to be something that was good about the place. It can be packaging, it can be um, the customer service, but there's always something that was good. Mm. So um, I think people enjoy the fact that I try my best to write in a very unbiased way and give um, an honest opinion. An honest opinion, um, an honest critique. Mm-hmm. Let's call it an honest critique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's best. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now they call you up, um, you know, these, 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 these restaurants, these yeah. places, they call you up to come and um, um, go through the food and go through the whole thing and then the pay. I mean, when you, when you told me that, um, I don't know, it was, I, I, I didn't even know how to, how do you react to that? I was like, there was like, a like, movie. Mm-hmm. Now it's happening in beat up. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm the one that's slow, but big ups to you with it. So how how this um as you keep going with this um do you do you ever ask for or do they ever like give you samples ahead of time and tell you do you like this so maybe as you come through okay mm. um let me just clear it out mm. not all my posts are um promotional mm. so i ibile a large percentage of them are just me. Um, at, at the scale that I am right now, a large, I'd say 90% of my posts are me um, going to restaurants independently, independent of the restaurants mm-hmm. themselves. But I have had a couple of paid promotions and um, I have had, I think um, the first time I came close to something like the question you're asking me previously mm-hmm. was when I, reviewed some iced tea that I had at a certain um, restaurant and they sent me a DM. I guess they went through my um, post because I do tag restaurants. Mm-hmm. So um, they went through the post and they received the um, feedback well. They asked me to come through for a menu tasting mm. just to give them a few pointers on what to fix, what to add, how I feel about what. So that I think that that's only actually happened once where I was invited for a menu tasting. Mm. Yeah. But other than that, um, I have had invites just to come a few, a few, but I'm hoping after this, um, (laughs) you guys are open to inviting me all the time. For sure. Yeah. So I have had a few where I'm asked to just come in and just have whatever and then talk about what I felt, what I experienced. Yeah. So... Um, so as you started this, you were just going just for free and just giving your honest opinion. And then how did that am. first one happen? You still are. 
we have to yes. we have to make sure you still are. Yeah. How did that first um promotion come through? The first promotion was actually not even with the restaurant. It was with the mall. I won't I won't Whoa. mention it. But if you go through my um timeline, my yes. post, you will see it. So it came through via oh no 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 no. So initially I I did used to um send emails just asking people, asking restaurants to collaborate with me. And I never got any replies. Mm -hmm. And I had sent this mall um, an email, I think twice. Yeah, because I used to, I I lived close to the mall during that time, that specific mall. So I used to visit it a lot. So every time I tagged a particular restaurant, I would tag that mall because Mm -hmm. that was, I wanted to show which restaurant I went to in which mall, right? Mm. So um, I th- I think after maybe let's say a year, they got into contact with me. They sent me an email. They were like, hi, um, we're doing this and this. I um, would like you to um, talk about it on your platforms. And for mm. me, it was like, are you serious? And they mentioned that they would be paying me. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> and guess what they said? I mm. set the price. Whoa. So I set the price. Yeah. I set the price. The very first. The very, my very first paid gig. I shared it with my aunt and I had an aunt who believed in every, I mean, my parents believe in everything I do, but I also had an aunt who believes in. She mm. believed that everything I did was amazing. So I shared with her, dog. I got this, um, email and mm. they wanted to work with me man was she not excited she's actually the one who helped me um price my services because i wasn't sure how to price them so she's the one who assisted me in pricing them and yeah that was my first gig with the mall it's powerful it's powerful so talk to me about how you price your your donuts as you sell them and also um maybe as now you've been running for two years now, now, mm-hmm. um, two years in June, I guess. Yeah, two so years in June. you've been running for two years and, and the difference between what you're seeing, um, with individuals versus corporates and maybe, um, where you'd be going. Um, how I price my donuts is mm-hmm. I have, <clears throat> I have several menus. So we have, let me say we. Mm-hmm. We have several menus and we have different types of donuts. So we have classic donuts, we have mini donuts, we have themed donuts, we have crunchy. Man, just mm-hmm. visit, visit w.donuts on Instagram, Facebook, and you'll get to um, appreciate our different menus and the different donuts that we make. So we price them according to the complexity of what you'd like and um, the different props that we have to add to the different donuts. Mm. So that is how we price um, our different donuts. Yeah. Mm. The complexity. Yes, the complexity. Like I said, we make <laughs> edible art. So <laughs> there are some donuts that you just want to look at the whole day and not even eat. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, it just, they just looks... look amazing. Okay. So you're now um, an aspiring serial entrepreneur. You, you, you have a car rental. How, how are you, what, what informs your decision-making process as you look at a business or what you want to venture into now that you're coming from this? Um, I'll just say, I, I, I talk to my dad a lot. Mm-hmm. I talk to my dad a lot and my mom. Um, I bounce ideas off them, my friends too. Um, so, and before I start a business, um, especially if it's like a business that sells, um, something that I can, um, start in small units like donuts, Mm -hmm. I first like to market test, Yeah. but with car rental, you can't really market test. Dude, if you buy a car, you bought a car. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can't market so test with now. I can't say Mpo, please lend me your car. I'd like to test the car rental market. I don't think you'd agree. So you just have to get into it. So that the, there are some businesses where you just have to get into it. Mm-hmm. But where you can, um, it's advisable to test the market first because 
in as much as I have had my fair share of success in businesses, I have also had quite a number of failed businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I've taken from those businesses is it's very important not to assume you know what your market wants, Mm. but to go out there, talk to your market, talk to your potential market, test different products and take feedback from your market. And then that is when you can come back with um, a product that is suited for the market that you're in. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you, 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 yeah, you're pushing now business and whatever. Where do you, where do you get your, your, your ambition for this? Where, where does it stem from? It's just simple for me. I like money. <laughs> I really, I'm not even going to lie. I, I like money. I like affording. Yeah, I love that answer. Though. I love affording nice things. Mm. Uh, and I'm trying to afford even nicer things. Mm. So I'm, I've am i just come to a conclusion that in order for me to get those things, I'm the only one who can get myself those things. Mm. So I need to put in the work. And I need to make sure that everything that I do, I remember the purpose behind why I'm doing it Mm -hmm. and to give my all and to give the best client or customer service that I can to make sure that I retain my clients and um, get more clients and um, in the long run, um, grow my business Mm -hmm. or expand it. Follow up on that one. What is the number one? Um, lesson or advice you have for getting and retaining clients? My number one lesson would be um, take feedback positively. Take feedback from your clients positively. Mm -hmm. So if a client comes to you and they say, hi, Wanata, um, I thought today's donuts were a bit salty or I didn't like they were hard don't then now take it as an attack on your business Mm -hmm. right because initially this client came to you they didn't know you so why are you now assuming that they are now with feedback why are you taking it personally Mm. so take it as something that you can use to build your business Mm -hmm. and then Go back to your client, the client that's giving you feedback. Go back to them, have a one-on-one chat. Ask them, okay, um, I'd just like to understand what it is that um, you did not appreciate about the donuts or the customer service that you received. Was it the saltiness? Was it too sweet for you? Um, Those things are feedback that you can use to improve your product. Right? Remember, you're trying to make, my aim is to make the world's best donuts. Beautiful. So in order for me to get to that point, I can't be the one who's always um, reviewing my own donuts because mm. I, I need reviews from different type, different types and different age groups of people for me to get the perfect donut. So for me, I use that feedback to better my business. And um, I also, you know, when you listen to your clients, they love that. They love it. And um that actually, the fact that you even apologized and you fixed that mistake, they even forget that initially there was even a mistake. Mm. And they use that chance to now tell people about you and to, man, to just applaud you. And a happy client will literally tell every single person they meet about you. Even if even if that person doesn't like donuts, they're definitely going to tell that person, Yo, mm-hmm. dude, today I met this girl, she makes donuts, and when I told her I didn't like them, she did this and this. I was so happy. Mm-hmm. Now this person's going to be interested in getting to know you and getting to know your product. That's one, one other cu- client gained. And that's one other client retained. For sure. So it's a win-win. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Before I ask my last question, when where can we find you on and offline and engage with your work right. and get them donuts? <laughs> so um, we are available on Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook at w.donuts, just a full stop, not dot the word. So mm-hmm. w.donuts on both Instagram and Facebook. And we're also available on WhatsApp business. Um, you can call or WhatsApp us on 77 77- Nine six eight zero double eight, or for international, you have an international audience, right? For sure, so it's two six seven 
seven seven nine six eight zero double eight so that is where you will find on all our platforms facebook instagram and whatsapp um we have our catalog readily available for all our clients to view and choose what you'd like and place mm-hmm. your order nice um how do you want to be remembered as one that's I want to be remembered as the girl who believed she could do anything she set her mind to mm-hmm. and actually be the girl who actually set her mind to the wildest, most craziest things and actually achieve them. Mm. So basically that is what I am working towards. Just the life of comfort, Soft you know, life. softness. <laughs> I deserve it, man. I think we all deserve it. So we really should be striving for the best. Mm-hmm. All of us should be striving for the best lives that we could possibly afford ourselves. Nice. And my business has taught me that we definitely can do anything we set our minds to um, um, with discipline, self-discipline, hard work. Um, you definitely can do anything you set your mind to. As yes. corny as it sounds. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. true. It's true. Beautiful. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Wanata Mukati has just given us some golden nuggets on running a business and making it bigger and bigger and bigger and constantly improving on your craft and on what you do. So I hope this episode has been valuable to you as it has been valuable to me. And we will meet next time, same, pl- same time, same place. And make sure to like, comment below what you think and subscribe to the channel. 